Good morning, everyone. I'm Mara Manis, the Executive Director of NISCA, and it's so thrilling to have you with us today. And we are joined by hundreds of, uh, of participants from across the state and across all 10 regions of our state, to be exact. Um, as we all know, this is going to be a critical year for the art sector. The experience of COVID has changed our lives forever and has impacted every sector, and the arts are no exception. We find ourselves in the middle of a massive paradigm shift that will have incredible implications for organizations across our field. And it will likely necessitate new investments in technology, in workforce, and a rethinking of programming. We have many, many people to thank today. Our Governor, Governor Hochul and her staff, our New York State legislators, our Department of Budget, and you. This year, we are bringing $127 million to our field, and we are so grateful. I want to especially thank all of you for your work in reaching out to your legislatures and for amplifying the impact of your work in every way. And also special thanks to those of you who completed our uh, COVID impact survey in February. We were able to bring 1,300 responses in and real-time data to the budget-making process uh, for New York State, and it was really thrilling, so thank you again. Before we begin, I want to recognize the incredible work of the NISCA staff under the leadership of Abigail Young, our Deputy Director of Operations and General Counsel, and Megan White, our Deputy Director of Programs, who will be joining us today. Tomorrow's Abigail's last day at NISCA, and I want to take this moment to express our immense gratitude for her phenomenal service to the state, to NISCA, and to our field. So thank you, Abigail. A few housekeeping items before we begin. As you know, we officially launched our guidelines uh, and application manual this past Tuesday, May 16th. Today's webinar will be an overview of our FY24 opportunities. And please know that aside from this webinar, which will be posted on our website after this uh, by tomorrow, um, that we will be hosting opportunity specific webinars Wednesday, May 31st through Friday, June 2nd. A full schedule of those and the registration links will be shared and posted to our website following today's webinar. We also plan to host, as we have in the past, virtual office hours with NISCA staff, and that schedule will be posted as well as soon as we have it. Many thanks to those of you who submitted questions in advance. We will have a dedicated Q&A session following the presentation, and you can still submit questions through the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We really encourage you, however, to listen to the entire presentation before submitting your, your questions today, as many of them will be answered in our deck. We've also budgeted time to go over 12 p.m. should we receive a lot of questions and if you're able to, and as your schedule allows. A reminder that this webinar will be recorded and posted on the NISCA website. And again, we will share that link with you when it is live. Before we jump into our presentation, I want to remind you that the FY24 guidelines and application manual are available on our 24 opportunities page on our website under the For Applicants tab. We highly recommend you book, bookmarking this page. These documents are your go-to resources throughout the entire process. And you can begin work on the application with the information in the guidelines now. Don't need to wait until the portal opens. Just want to make sure everyone understands that. Today, we will talk about three NISCA opportunities, which do not include our capital opportunity, and our capital as our capital opportunity will launch this fall. So, as many of you may know, we have um, we have launched a new mission and mission statement and values, and we want to share that that with you for those who may have not received the email. So, our new mission is. Uh, to foster and advance the full breadth of New York State's arts, culture, and creativity for all. We were honored to announce this last week, and we are grateful to, the, to our council and our staff and our field for your input in formulating both our mission and our new values. Our values. We value the vast diversity of New York State communities. We value equitable engagement with the arts for people of all ages and inclusive of all backgrounds. We value access to the full breadth of arts and culture. We value the vital role that arts and culture play in the health of the economy and our people. We value the constant evolution of art making and creative practice. And we value creativity as a community asset.
The vision for the agency is a result of our comprehensive strategic planning process that uh, we begun in 2018 and concluded in 2022. This included engagement with over 800 members of our arts and culture field through in-person workshops, interviews, and surveys. This inclusive process would not have been possible without the dedication and input of our field, our council, and our NISCA staff. In response to the COVID pandemic, elements of our strategic plan, including a stream, streamlined application process and more responsive funding, were enacted with, with swiftness as part of our FY22 opportunities. The overhauls we made to our grant making process that year were the most substantial in the history of our agency. We continue to build upon them with each successive round of funding. Once again, our profound gratitude to our field and to, to all of you for your input and support throughout this process. Let's move into our funding priorities. As I mentioned earlier, this is a critical year for the arts. Our FY22 funding priorities embody NISCA's new mission and values and continue to build upon the significant changes made in the last two funding rounds. And these priorities are expansive eligibility and access to funding for all organizations and all individual artists from a wider range of artistic practice and underrepresented and local communities. Streamline, streamlining user experience to reduce burdens, as such as time spent on the application to expand access for new applicants and small and medium-sized organizations. For those of you who are new, uh, for those of you who are new to the application process, we have a brand new portal called Smart Simple. Uh, we have found it to be both smart and simple for our applicants as well as our staff. Uh, the reduction and consolidation of funding categories in the application and evaluation process. The first four will be offered on the exact same timeline. And, and again, capital opportunity will launch in the fall of 2023. Flexible funding and reporting terms in response to the fluid nature of our times. So we introduced these during COVID, and we still feel that uh, there, we still, still feel that the, there's merit in continuing to offer these on a case by case basis. Um, so uh, please continue to reach us. Um, support for organizations funding may be applied to your organization's area of greatest need. Um, I am now thrilled to introduce Megan White, uh, our Deputy Director of Programs and uh, a critical member of our senior management team. Megan, over to you. Thank you so much, Mara. So what is the first step to apply for NISCA funding? The first step is pre-qualification. You must be pre-qualified in the New York State Grants Gateway online portal at the application deadline to be eligible for funding from NISCA. Please note, this is a separate portal from the application portal. Please do not wait, start now. Nonprofit organizations must be pre-qualified to do business with New York State agencies before they can compete for state grants. The process allows nonprofits to address questions and concerns prior to entering a competitive bid process. For new applicants, please begin the pre-qualification process as soon as possible. For returning applicants, please make sure you check your vault status, which expires annually. Hundreds of vaults are expiring in the next few months. So please review your status today so that you'll be aware of what your organization's status is. If you have additional questions on the pre-qualification requirement, please contact us at help at arts.ny.gov or visit our website for more information, including a pre-recorded webinar on 10 tips on pre-qualification. Back over to you, Mar. Key dates. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, key dates. So our, as we mentioned before, our guidelines posted on May 16th, this past Tuesday. Our application portal opens on June 1st, and our application portal closes on July 13th at 4 p.m. But we want to underscore, everything you need to start the application process is available now on our website. So get started. Eligibility. In order to be eligible for NISCA funding, you must be a nonprofit organization, either incorporated in or registered to do business in New York State. You must be, uh, or you can be a Native American nations in New York State or a unit of government in New York State municipalities. You must have your principal place of business located in New York State. And we ask that you please review eligibility as listed in the guidelines. Back to you, Megan. 
So let's look at a few of the categories um, that we have for funding. The first is support for organizations. Support for organizations provide, provides flexible general operating and programming funding for nonprofit organizations. This opportunity is limited to one request per organization and may be awarded as a multi-year grant. We'll discuss a little bit more about multi-years later on in this session. Although organizations may only submit one application for their own entity to NISCA for support for organizations, they may also serve as fiscal sponsors for other unincorporated organizations. Additionally, universities or other organizations that apply on behalf of a department or an embedded program must also imply, apply as fiscal sponsors. Our next funding area is support for artists. NISCA embraces the rich diversity of art making across New York and applicants from across all artistic practices and disciplines are encouraged to apply. These grants fund creative commissions to individual artists across the state. There are eight commission areas, choreography, composer, film, media, and new technology, folk and traditional arts, interdisciplinary, literature, theater commissions, and visual arts. Applicants must apply through a, a nonprofit fiscal sponsor. The next area is targeted opportunities. Please note that this is opportunity has been renamed. It was formerly titled special opportunities. This encompasses three separate areas. The first is creative performance residencies. This opportunity supports a minimum three consecutive week residency by New York-based performing arts groups in targeted areas in New York State outside of the applicant's home county and outside of New York City. Sponsored requests are not eligible in this particular category. The next area is, is rehearsal and studio space for performing arts. This funding is intended to support creative rehearsal time and organizations that provide viable and affordable space for nonprofit arts groups and artists. Sponsored requests are again, not eligible in this category. The last part of this category is folk and traditional arts apprenticeships. This funding provides individuals experienced in a folk art with opportunities to study with master folk artists from their own community. Priority is given to apprenticeships involving the transmission of traditions that are no longer widely practiced. Support is awarded to both the, ma the master and the apprentice. The next area is regrants and services. Please note that this opportunity was formally titled NISCA Partnerships. This opportunity is by invitation only. This opportunity supports regrant and partner organizations across all 62 counties while identifying new opportunities to ensure the greater reach of NISCA funding and greater access for new applicants. Partnerships cover a range of services and funding ensures that NISCA dollars reach all 62 counties of New York. So I said we would talk a little bit more about multi-years. Um, we Again, NISCA funds both single and multi-year grants. You do not request multi-year grants. NISCA awards multi-year grants when the panel, staff, and the council of NISCA agree that a similar level of service or activity will be sustained by the applicant organization over successive years. Multi-year grants represent NISCA's agreement to offer successive years of support without requiring a full application or review of the grantee in succeeding years, conditional on NISCA's budget appropriation and the applicable contract extension for each successive year. Let me share with you also now a little bit about how our applications are evaluated. Please review the information listed in each set of guidelines as well as the application manual. All of our requests go through a four-step review process. First, NISCA staff reviews the application for completion and completes a fiscal review of the organization for solvency. Next, the panel reviews application and support materials and rates based on three criteria as shared in the guidelines, creativity, public service, and fiscal and managerial. Thirdly, the NISCA Council reviews these recommendations and approves them. Finally, once they're notified about their funding approval, um, if an applicant wishes to appeal a council decision, they may submit a formal appeal, which is a separate review process that looks for errors in the panel review process. Those are our four steps of evaluation. Panelists are an integral part to our grant making muscle at NISCA. Each year, panelists play a key role in NISCA grant making. NISCA selects a diverse group of professionals from across the state to fulfill the advisory panelist role. 
panelists expertise spans a range of artistic practices, as well as many facets of nonprofit management. Advisory panelists must demonstrate expertise in at least one of NISCA's evaluation criteria. We're currently seeking panelists from all 10 regions of the state, and all of our FY24 panel meetings will be conducted virtually. Nominations are due by June 2nd, 2023 to be considered for panel service for this calendar year. Please visit our website to nominate yourself or a colleague. Um, at, at the uh, part of our website that is https arts.ny.gov slash panelists. Over to you, Mar. Thank you, Megan. So who should I contact with questions? For technical questions on submitting online applications or anything about pre-qualification, please contact help at arts.ny.gov. For opportunity-related questions, please contact program staff in the funding area most aligned with your organization's work. However, all staff contact information can be found under the About tab on our NISCO website. We really encourage you to submit all of your questions at least two weeks before the application deadline. And please note that we do not review written draft application materials. We will make sure that your questions are answered. Next slide. Mark your calendar. So our annual webinar week uh, runs May 31st to June 1st. That's a Wednesday through Friday. This get, the schedule and registration links for those webinars will be posted on our website this afternoon. And please note that all webinars are recorded and posted on the NISCA website, and this one will be as well. NISCA will host several virtual office hours starting in June. The schedule and registration links will be posted later this month. We ask that you please read the guidelines in their entirety before attending a NISCA webinar and office hours. Reminder that you can always reach out to NISCA staff outside of the webinars and the office hours with any questions. Additionally, attending webinars and contacting this NISCA staff is optional. It has absolutely no bearing on the review of your application. And once again, please start the pre-qualification process today. That concludes our presentation. Before we jump into our Q&A session, I want to reiterate the importance of making sure your organization is pre-qualified in Grants Gateway. Each year, I receive a list of all organizations that have submitted applications but didn't pre-qualify, and it's truly heartbreaking to me. These are organizations from every region and every size, every single funding round, I get a list. Um, and the fact is that these organizations may have um, had documents in their vault which have expired or didn't pre-register to begin with. So um, please make sure that your vault is up to date and that you have gone through this process. Grants Gateway stands separate from us as an agency. This is not part of our own agency, but we are here to help in every way. We don't want anyone to be disqualified on any technicality. So, um, this is probably the most important step that you can take before embarking on your application. Megan, let's jump into questions. And I know that you have some um, that we have that we want to co cover that are some of the most common questions that we receive. So let's start with those. Sure. Um, well, first of all, um, many of you wanted to know what has changed from last year to this year. And uh, for those of you who have applied last year, I want to let you know that very little has changed from last year's application. Um, the new NISCA mission and values are included in every set of guidelines. Special opportunities has now been retitled targeted opportunities. NISCA partnerships is now retitled regrants and services. We've made separate guidelines for support for sponsored organizations. So the guidelines are actually the same but we separated those out to avoid confusion for those organizations who will be applying um, as a sponsor. And the support for organization grant um, now range from 10,000 to 49.5. Some other questions that come up uh, often, uh, how many opportunities may I apply for? So as we stated earlier in the webinar and in our guidelines, you may apply for one support for organizations request. Um, you can also apply for targeted opportunities along with that. And your organization can also sponsor someone in, in, in support for artists. You can apply to all three. The application deadline is Thursday, July 13th at 4 p.m. No exceptions. Please make sure you get your materials and your questions and your pre-qualification and all of that in 
well before that deadline. When do I have to pre-qualify? You need to be pre-qualified by the application deadline, but please start this process yesterday if possible. Um, can I apply for support for organizations if I received funding last year? Well, yes, you can. However, if you're a multi-year, please note that you do not need to reapply. If you're not sure if you're a multi-year support, review your contract, or you can reach out to our help desk at help at arts.ny.gov. Um, a little bit about who can serve as a fiscal sponsor, any registered New York State nonprofit arts and cultural organization that is pre-qualified can serve as a sponsor. Your sponsoring organization does not have to be related to the organization's discipline. Uh, for example, a nonprofit museum could sponsor a music group, for example. For details regarding organization sponsorship, please refer to the sponsoring organization's guidelines which again, we have separated out from support for organizations guidelines this year. For details regarding artist sponsorship, uh, refer to the support for artist guidelines. So I think that's a, that pretty much covers the, uh, our FAQs, Mara. Okay, great. So let's jump into some uh, live questions. Um, can an arts organization apply as well as serve as a fiscal sponsor for individual artists? Megan, the answer is yes, yes? The answer is absolutely, yes, you absolutely may. Yeah, um, so uh, let's see, another question is, um, what do we have before us here? Um, what grants are available for for-profit organizations? So NISCA only funds nonprofit organizations, only funds nonprofit organizations. Just wanted to underscore that. Um, can an organization apply for more than one performing arts residency? Megan, you want to take that? Sure. Um, the residency opportunity is limited to one request to allow as many performing arts companies uh, to apply. So please take note of that. Please take note, exactly. Um, oh, Mara, I have one for you. Uh, what, what grants are available for for-profit organizations? No grants are available for for-profit organizations. Um, we do not fund for-profit organizations. Um, so can you please confirm the procedure for an organization that received a two-year multi-year award in FY23? Megan, you wanna answer that? You have received a two-year multi-year award, you're on multi-year support. So once you receive information about how to accept your multi-year award, um, you can do that and you're all set for your, um, to receive your multi-year funds. You do not need to reapply. Yeah, so don't sweat that, so sweat that one. Um, so how does one apply for an individual grant if one doesn't have a relationship with a granting institution? Okay, so this is really important. We cannot make a grant to an individual, which is why you need to be fis fiscally sponsored. But even if you don't have a relationship, you can approach an institution. You can go, there's a, several paths. You know, one is to go through, depending on if you're, if you're an artist and you want to um, go through uh, any number of fiscal sponsors. Do we have a list of fiscal sponsors on our website, Megan? We do not maintain a list um, because any organization that is a nonprofit in New York State can actually be a fiscal sponsor. Right. And again, to underscore what Megan said earlier, you don't have to have, a, not only do you have, not have a relationship, but your work doesn't have to have, to have a relationship. So in other words, um, you know, you could be a uh, painter and have the public theater sponsor you. Um, you can be uh, a musician and have a museum sponsor you. So it's uh, it's just about reaching out to any nonprofit, and um, and there's many. And you know, if you if you need further advice, uh, we can uh, reach us, and we probably can help you there. Um, so I think we've covered the multi-year question. No need to submit another application or renewal. Just sit tight and congratulations on your work. Um, okay, Omara, so, does an individual artist need to pre-qualify? No, but, in, but the sponsoring organization that the individual artist uh, is applying to needs to pre-qualify. Thank you, good one. Um, so Megan, if we currently have a multi-year award under support for organizations, can we submit for another award under this in this round of funding for a different program? Certainly. Um, you can look towards the targeted opportunities um, 
for, and you can also sponsor an artist. Yeah. Um, so can an organization that uses the arts to help with people's health apply? Well, you have to have um, considerable arts activity to be able to apply. Uh, NISCO only funds arts and cultural activity. So if you have a, a programming um, that happens to serve an audience that you're already working with, um, that's applicable, but you do need to have considerable arts and cultural activity. That's what we fund. Um, can organizations that were awarded grants in 23 apply for 24? Absolutely. However, Megan, you wanted to do the however part? However, um, so this is ongoing NISCA support. If you receive NISCA support in 23, um, you can apply for 24, but if you're a multi-year support, there's not, there, there is not a need to reapply. So, and if you're not sure if you're a multi-year support, please reach out to the help desk or look back to your contract to see what's indicated. Right. Um, I saw that organizations applying for rehearsal space and the targeted opportunities to reach out to program staff. Is this opportunity for all applicants is this for all applicants new and those who are current grantees or just new grantees? No, this is for, Megan, this is for all applicants, right? All applicants. All right. applicants, yeah. You don't have to be new. Um, uh, so to be clear, this is one, a clarifying question about the target opportunity for subsidized rehearsal space. Does that mean that we can apply to use rehearsal space or is that about providing rehearsal space? Megan. Subsidized rehearsal space is about providing affordable opportunities to performing arts groups and artists in New York State. Right. Um, can you tell us a bit about the capital projects opportunity that will be open in the fall? We cannot at this point, but we look forward to doing so in the fall. Um, stay tuned, but I would really encourage you to uh, make sure that you are on our mailing list um, because all information will be shared uh, on our mailing list and on social, but certainly on, the, on our mailing list. So make sure you're on that. Um, let's see, can we apply for NISCA regrant funds? You wanna take that one, Megan? Available locally? Um, organizations, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Um, so if you're looking to applying for a SER grant, um, you certainly are free to do so. You cannot apply to NISCA and uh, SCR site um, within the same calendar year. Great. Um, again, another question about you're on multi-year, can we apply for other opportunities? Yes, yes, the answer is yes. Um, when will applicants be notified of NISCA's decision? I think we can safely say by the end of the year. Hopefully. Before the end of the year. Yeah. Before the end of the year, but hopefully earlier. Usually late fall, I think is a, is a safe bet. There we go. Okay. Um, Mara, can an organization apply if uh, their staff is majority volunteers? I believe so, Megan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, so again, uh, so we were on multi-year support previously. Last year, we received a one-year grant. Will we be eligible for multi-year again this year? So again, uh, back to what Megan said, um, multi-year is something we, uh, we assign, you don't apply for. And, but certainly everyone who applies is uh, put into consideration for multi-year. Um, can artists who receive funding in 2023 apply? Yes, please do. Thank you. Um, we've actually doubled down in our support to artists. Um, this past year, we made 400, over 400 grants to artists and that, that's up from about 150 a couple of years ago. And uh, we are continuing to, um, prioritize artists as part of our funding. Uh, if a new nonprofit expects to file a 990, does that preclude application to NISCA? How long does, sorry, someone jumped around. Uh, uh, how long does a nonprofit have to be in existence to apply for NISCA funding? Should we have that person, that organization contact us directly. Um, absolutely. Uh, but you know, generally speaking, you need to have all your um, all of your financial filings in place and actually have um, somewhat of a history of arts activity for the panel to be able to evaluate if you expect to receive public funds. 
Yeah. Um, this is a good question. If the is the pre-qualification portal specific to NISCA grants, or if you apply to other New York State grants in the past, would this be under the same system? It is the same system. Um, because you, uh, in order to receive a grant from New York State, any nonprofit has to go through the pre-qualification process. So I would just double check the status of your vault, but the vault's the same across the state. Correct, Megan? Correct. Okay. Um, Megan, you wanna go find another one? If we have many. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm kind of scrolling. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Oh, how about this one, Megan, about the folks? So for I'll read it. For the folk and traditional arts apprenticeships grant, do the student and teacher both need to be residents of New York State? I believe Selvage can reach out to the folk arts program directly for more information. Okay. Um, so, and I, this is about rehearsal space. So for the organization applying to sponsor rehearsal, to offer rehearsal space, um, it says that we require a minimum of rehearsal space, a thousand, a thousand hours of rehearsal space to be offered each year. And that is a minimum. And I don't believe that we, there's flexibility in that. Is that true, Megan? Check with the uh, actual um, uh, program staff for more information. Okay, so check with program staff. Um, okay, so can prior applicants of support for artists apply again for FY24 if they were unsuccessful or successful? Megan? So artists, I believe, need to take a year off in between applications. But again, you can reach out directly to the support for artists uh, guidelines for a specific detail on that. Okay. Could the not-for-profit be a sponsor for a junior company which provides the performance preparation? I'm not sure I understand that question. It sounds like it. So it sounds like yes, as long as the uh, company is not also a registered non for profit. Um, you know, if there's a relationship between the two organizations and uh, the fiscal sponsor is pre qualified, but the organization that's being sponsored is not also a non, non for profit entity, then uh, yes, they are welcome to sponsor that organization. Great. And there's a question about grants for rehearsal and studio space category. Um, Please check out the guidelines. There's a lot of detail there. Um, and if uh, you still have questions, reach our program staff. Mara, can a nonprofit that provides arts education for youth apply? Nonprofit that provides arts education for youth. Yes. Absolutely. Um, can a nonprofit charter school apply for an artist residency? Megan, what's the answer to that? I would reach out to the program staff specifically. Yeah. Um, if we're seeking funds to support a series of live music performances, do we need to be invited to apply? Mara? No, not invited. We don't invite anyone, do we? <laughs> um, you're welcome we, to we do invite, sorry, we do. We have one category for invitation, I stand corrected. Um, for that one, what's... Do you concur, Megan? You don't need to be invited to apply. All nonprofit organizations are welcome to apply for support for organizations, targeted opportunities, or, um, or any of our artist uh, sponsorship categories. Um, someone has pointed out that the manual says a unit of local government is eligible but you just said that you only fund nonprofit organizations. Mara, can you clarify? Can you repeat that? That's okay, another question. In the application manual, it says yeah. that a unit of local government is eligible, but you said that we only fund nonprofit organizations. So can you clarify that? Oh, yeah, Muni municipalities are also eligible. Correct, Megan? Correct. Okay, um, so, and thank you to our audience for catching that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you received a multi-year $10,000 grant, will that automatically be upgraded to $49,500? No, it will not be automatically upgraded. Actually, the, the amount of um, the amount that's stipulated in a contract applies through the multi-years, through the years on your multi-year. Uh, 
And will the multi-year grant remain the original funding requested for each year? What does that mean? What's your interpretation of that? I believe they're asking if their grant's going to remain level. And as the contract states, you're, if you receive, for example, $10,000 um, as a original grant, your contract is for $10,000 for each successive year that that, that uh, contract is in effect. Can an organization apply for both an operating and a targeted opportunity grant? Most certainly. Um, if you have applicable activity um, in the category, you are certainly welcome to apply. If you received a multi-year grant last year, can you apply for a different type of grant this year? Again, yes, you may. Um, your multi-year will remain in effect, but if you have new activity, for example, in a targeted opportunity, or if you wish to sponsor an artist, you are welcome to do so. Uh, so a lot of yeah. similar questions. I'm also seeing, um, can a, botanical, a nonprofit botanical garden with exhibitions, uh, programming exhibitions apply? We've been supported by NISCA years ago, but we want to verify that we can apply now under the current guidelines. Um, yeah, you're welcome to uh, contact uh, program staff in the area um, in which you're in which you're uh, interested in applying. Right. So, um, are organizations applying for the first time competing with longstanding NISCA recipients? So, the answer is yes. However, I just wanted to state the following. When we overhauled our, our guidelines a couple of years ago, the we have overarching goal was to create greater access to our dollars. So we are excited and thrilled and hopeful that we will continue to welcome new applicants every year and fund those new applicants. So please don't think for a second that being a current applicant or a previous applicant um, gives you some kind of privilege over new applicants. It doesn't. Everyone is on a level playing field when it comes to your application submission. So thank you for that question. And Mara, just as an additional note to that, about how many new applicants did we fund last year? I think a, a few hundred is what I'm yeah. looking at. Yeah. yeah. So it seems daunting. Um, but New York has some incredible activity going on everywhere, both new and ongoing. Please do not um, you know, let the fact that you might be a newer organization or new to NISCA deter you from uh, entering into the funding pool. Yeah, and I think, and Megan, um, we directly fund uh, organizations' budgets down to 20,000, is that, is that correct? That is correct. So we fund a lot of many, many, many small organizations, medium-sized organizations, that are critical to the health of their community and doing incredible work. So, um, and we purposely made the application process much easier and streamlined and simpler. So uh, as Megan said, um, please uh, please jump in. The waters are, are war. <laughs> um, can an organization apply for, this is jumping around, can an organization apply for two different targeted opportunities, a residency and a folkloric grant? Um, yes, you certainly may. Um, again, as long as you have an applicable activity in both uh, areas, you're welcome to apply to both. And Megan, how um, many, yeah, the next, you wanna take the next one I'm seeing about the artists? Yeah, um, is there a limit to how many artists an organization can sponsor? Organizations can sponsor one artist. However, if you're a service organization, there is not a limit to how many org, uh, artists you can sponsor. Great. Can a group of artists apply for support for artists for a particular project, or is it a grant for individual artists separately? Um, artists can apply for um, a project, but there needs to be an, one artist that will take the lead um, who will receive the funding. Through the fiscal sponsor. Through the, through the fiscal sponsor, correct. Thank Great. you. Okay. Um, if a new nonprofit applies to a fiscal sponsor, does that affect the number of grants a sponsor can apply for? It does not. Um, the, the sponsor themselves um, you know, can apply for their own, for example, support for organizations and targeted opportunities and sponsoring artists um, as well. Um, sponsoring, fiscally sponsoring another organization does not affect the um, number of applications that an organization can submit on their own behalf. 
Um, yes, I did say that fiscal sponsors have to pre-qualify as well. Yes, please note. So if you're not if you're not if you're not pre-qualified, all those uh, applications that you everything applies everything to be eligible to submit any application, right? Um, for any type, you have to be um, you have to be pre-qualified with the state. Exactly. Um, okay. So um, if yeah, not clear, multi-year twenty-three and twenty-four awarded organizations have to pre-qualify. Do we have to add documents to the vault? You must remain in pre-qualified status to receive any funding. So, if you want to receive, if you're on multi-year support and you want to receive your FY twenty-four funding, um, your vault must be in pre-qualified status. So, whatever it is that you need to do to remain pre-qualified, uh, you need to complete that in order to receive any successive funding from NISCA. Uh, again you must remain eligible to do business with New York State, and that means being pre-qualified. Right. I think we should put that on our website, like APB. <laughs> Again, for everyone who's on multi-years and listening to this, make right. sure that your vault and your, uh, your pre-qualification vault is up to date and not expired, because that will uh, impact our ability to provide your, your next year's funding. Correct. And this is for organizations, not individuals. Okay, individuals are sponsored by organizations. So if you're working with a sponsor and they're not pre-qualified, they will not be able to sponsor you. However, right. as an individual, you do not need to pre-qualify yourself. Only, this is only for organizations. Right. Uh, multi rear recipients who got support in 22 and 23 do have to reapply for 24. If you're not on multi-year support, you need to reapply. If you are on multi-year support, you do not need to reapply. So please check your contract status and um, and uh, behave accordingly. But regardless, um, you need to make sure that your pre-qualified status is solid. Okay, so final reports for 23, do those need to be completed before the application is submitted? Please refer to your, to your grant to see what your final report dates are and make sure that they are submitted timely. Yeah. Um, Will, uh, so these are the only opportunities that we're bringing forth to you this year, other than capital. Again, capital will be announced in the fall. Uh, can an organization that receives direct funding from NISCA and is also a NISCA re-grant partner serve as a fiscal sponsor for more than one individual artist? Megan. Um, yes. If you service organizations, can submit more than one request for um, to sponsor individual artists. Right. Um, regular organizations, organizations that are not service organizations may submit one. Right, okay. Can the performing arts residency include arts education? I don't have the answer to that, do you? They can check with staff. Check with staff on that one. Probably depends a lot on the detail there. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Would a gap in activity due to COVID years affect our organization's evaluation? Not that I know of. Megan? There are many organizations that have gaps in activity. Um, I think it's fair to say that you will explain, um, you know, what it is that did happen or uh, what planning or whatever happened uh, during COVID and also, um, you know, now what your plans are that things are ramping up again. So not necessarily. Yeah, right. And we had so many, there's so many organizations that had gaps and all kinds, you know, and, and actually even pivoted in terms of their activities and what they were offering to the community. So um, we saw a real range of activity or non-activity during COVID. Um, Again, uh, you don't apply for multi-year funding. We award that on the basis of your application and its excellence. Uh, panelists. So this is a good question because we are really welcoming new panelists and urge all of you to consider um, applying or nominating someone. Um, so can someone apply to be a panelist if their organization that they work for also plans to apply for NISCA funding? Absolutely. Um, we, uh, during, if you end up serving as a panelist and your application becomes before um, your group or your panel, Obviously, that's a conflict of interest, and then we just excuse you um, for that period, for that consider for that 
application. Is that right, Megan, or for that panel? I don't. You will not serve uh, or be in any type of decision making co uh, capacity for any application that um, you are in conflict with. So, any organization that you work for, um, any uh, organization that you've had like a recent uh, employment history for, and all of our panelists have to um, abide by these uh, conflict of interest um, rules, which they um, basically sign an agreement to prior to serving. I want to encourage everyone listening. Um, if you or if you know someone that um, would would make a good panelist to NISCA, please submit their information. We are always looking forward to engaging the total diversity of New York State. Um, you know, in, in all different areas, all different facets, all different backgrounds, all different types of administration, all different types of artistic practice. Um, the deadline, if you want to be engaged this year, is June second. However, we accept um, panelists um, nominations year round yeah. and hold on to them year round. So I strongly encourage you to please submit uh, the information. Um, not only is it a great service um, to your peers of the state, it is an incredible learning process as well. Yeah. And also if you are, um, if you have interest in becoming a panelist but don't know your schedule yet, we still encourage you to submit that application because we have uh, our panel process takes place across many months, and um, it's you know there you may be available for some panels and not for others. So please, uh, unless you know that you're not going to be able to serve at all um, in the months I believe it's sort of August through October, um, please do submit. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, welcoming new panelists. Uh, if we are awarded a direct organizational grant this round in 2023, or this round, I guess, will we be disqualified for capital funding grant this year? No, absolutely not. Capital funding and all the other categories stand separate, and um, we look forward to bringing the capital opportunities to everyone this fall. So Megan, can a nonprofit sponsor an artist for a piece that will be on permanent display at the nonprofit? That's a good question. Um, I would say that I think that they're eligible. Um, that, so the commissions are for the creation of work. Um, it's not to go towards necessarily like the purchase or display of a piece. Um, I would speak directly to um, uh, one of the staff about that. Um, who's the best person to reach out to regarding the newly formed 501c3 questions? Does that go to the help desk first? I would reach out to the help desk first and we'll forward it to the applicable staff. Okay. Um, um, are applications for each program opportunity read by the same panel of reviewers? Are, is there advantage, is there any disadvantage to organizations applying for more than one opportunity? Um, there's no dis disadvantage for applying for one opportunity. Um, each um, particular panel is comprised of individuals that have expertise in the area that an organization or artist is applying for. So it is uh, different reviewers depending on the opportunity um, that is being reviewed. Here's a good one. So is it possible to seek feedback on past year's application in the preparation for an upcoming cycle? So absolutely, we encourage everyone um, to seek feedback on their application and our staff st is standing by to provide that. Um, and we do believe that it helps in preparation for an up upcoming uh, application. So please reach out. Also, I'm seeing a, excuse me, I'm seeing a, um, a question about the technical submission of a grant application. So is there a phone number for a live person? Okay, so all of the phone, all of uh, all life people can be found, uh, numbers for our, our whole staff can be found on our website. So you can uh, reach them that way. However, just want to let everyone know that we will, will be posting a technical application webinar um, to the website. And uh, you can also reach our help desk for technical support. So thank you for that question. What is the criteria for multi-year grants? The criteria for all grants are posted in our guidelines. Um, it is the three criteria that state in the guidelines. However, you cannot apply for a multi-year grant. If you have, if 
again, if the staff panel and council agrees that there is a sufficient level of ongoing activity and the application rates um, high enough, then an organization may be awarded a multi-year grant. But the criteria for all grants is posted in our guidelines. It's the same three criteria. Um, someone's asking again, we're in year two of a multi-year grant. Can we apply this year for a separate opportunity or do we need to wait until the multi-year grant finishes? If you have a multi-year support for opportunities grant, you are welcome to apply for one of the targeted opportunities or to sponsor an artist. You do not need to wait. However, if you have an ongoing multi-year grant in, in, um, in any area, you cannot reapply again. Um, you know, you can't reapply again for support for, uh, for organizations. Um, yes, artists can only apply. So I'm sorry if I did not hear that answer earlier. Um, someone stated, I found in the uh, guidelines, artists applying for NISCA support for artists cannot apply for support the following year, even if no funding was received. That is absolutely correct. Artists, if you, whether or not you're funded, you need to take a year off. New York State has an endless number of artists. Unfortunately, NISCA has a very limited budget. Um, so our way of making sure that we always have um, ongoing activity and afford, um, you know, other artists to participate in the funding pool. If you have applied, you need to take a year off and then you're welcome to come back into the funding pool again. So that is absolutely correct. I want to emphasize to everyone, Mara, what, what is it that we tell people they should always do? Read the guidelines. Exactly. And where are they located? On our website. Absolutely. Under? So please which time <laughs> for applicants. Absolutely. And please familiarize yourself with them um, and read them over and over again, um, you know, prior to talking to staff so that you can have an informed conversation. That's yeah. always helpful. But thank you um, for whoever uh, pointed yeah. that out. Yeah, thank you so much. So here's a question. Do we have to have a physical space for business to apply? I think you probably need to reach out to program staff, right? Maybe. Uh, right, but there are organizations that don't necessarily have their own um, office, facilities. Office. Right. Um, but but do uh, programming, you know, in various places, you will need to describe where your activities do take place. Right. And your activities have to be open to the public. Right. So activities have to be open to the public. Okay. Support for organizations and targeted opportunities are indeed two separate applications. It's, it's two different sets of questions. Uh, it's two different concerns. Uh, will there be a general operating support grant opportunity from NISCA? Support for organizations is what used to be known as general operating support. It is support that is flexible where you may apply, that you can apply to where you need it the most. Did we answer this question? Can an artist who's an employee of a nonprofit apply? Ah, someone moved that screen. Uh, basically, I think it was, can an artist who works for an organization also apply? can apply for the artist support if the organization's also applying for NISCA support? And the answer is yes. No, you may not apply oh, no? for, if, if as an employee of oh, an organization. Employee. Sorry, right. you're right. You may not apply for artist support. Okay. Um, you might wanna be sponsored perhaps by another organization. Right, so they can apply to a fiscal sponsor. You might wanna apply with a different fiscal sponsor. Yeah, okay, got it. Um, the list is moving, so it's hard for me to. Right. For read. folk arts apprenticeships, what is the maximum for which you can apply for a master and apprentice? Well, the grants are, are flat $10,000. Right. Um, it's $5,000 for, um, for the master and for the apprentice. Okay. So if there are other costs that are involved, um, you will need to figure out how to, how to cover those as part of your overall budget. Oh, Mara, here's a good one. Do we have to apply for a specific amount of money in the support for organizations category? No, you do not apply. You do not. There's no request amount, um, and uh, so no need to worry about that. Uh, that's something that we determine once we have the full breadth of the applications um, in consideration and scored. Uh, so, if you received a multi-year for 22 and 23, should you apply for this round? Okay, so if your multi-year is, uh, is your, if your multi-year is concluded in 23, you do need to apply for 24. 
And again, you just apply, there's not a separate application for the multi-year, multi-years of consideration that we, that we make um, for uh, excellent uh, applications. If someone is in the governing body of a grantee organization, can they become a panelist? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and the same um, restrictions that we mentioned before about conflict um, still apply to that individual. But um, yeah, we're, we also um, do engage um, board members and people that are other parts of other governing bodies. Again, no, no request amount. I see there's a number of questions about request amounts. No request amounts. Um, so for the support for artist grant, does the artist need to be New York based or can that, or can it be that their fiscal sponsor is New York based and hosted and are hosted by the organization? Artists need to be New York state residents. Okay, New York based. Um, so the maximum number of years possible in the multi-year, that's what we determine every year. So that can change. Uh, the exact funding levels are determined. Uh, there's there's many um, factors that go into determining the funding levels of an, of a grant. Um, so, the funding levels are generally determined by um, the scores that uh, requests receive, NISCA's availability, uh, the budget availability, and the budget size of the organization um, are a few major factors that go into determining. Uh, funding amounts. Great. Um, so can my nonprofit apply for both support for target organizations for a music residency program and support for organizations for operating support? And if we apply to both, is it possible to, to be awarded both or would we be awarded at most one of the two? So basically, is it, do you get dinged for uh, or not, um, if you submit more, more than one application, or is there, is it a disadvantage? And I don't think it is at all. Right? It's not a disadvantage. No. There, it's not a disadvantage at all. Right. Um, they're really considered under the, you know, within the category that you're applying. So um, no one's checking to see who's applied for more than one opportunity in any way. And many of our organizations do apply for more than one opportunity. Right. Um, yes, it will be a pre-qualification specific webinar. Thank you for asking. Um, that will be posted to our website. Is it, Megan, do we have that now or is that coming up? There's, um, so you can look at the application manual and there is one that is already on the website for you to look at right now, whenever you're okay, ready. You okay, pre-qualification specific webinar available now. Okay, <laughs> head there. Um, I think we're oh, pretty much wrapping up soon. Uh, let's see, if an organization is relatively new, but the people who are managing the programs have a great deal of experience, does that affect eligibility? Eligibility is eligibility. Yeah. Um, it's the same across the board. You need to be pre-qualified and not for profit registered to do business in New York State. Um, your budget must be over a certain size. And um, you know you have to have ongoing arts and cultural activity. Um, that's the same for all applicants. So again, please look at the application manual. We, we view the eligibility requirements. And if you still have questions after that, um, please feel free to reach out to any staff with specifics. But yeah. our eligibility requirements are, are level across, across the board. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then we're gonna close out. Um, are there restrictions from getting funding from both NISCA and other state agencies for all of the opportunities listed today? Absolutely not, Megan, unless I, unless you know otherwise. Um, no, we just don't really wanna have, um, you will be asked to fill out a budget as part of the application process, indicating um, what funds are going to what portions of your, um, your organization's operations. Okay, great. Um, thank you. This has been so fun. Thank you for your questions um, and for being with us today. Again, uh, we that concludes our um, our uh, time with you. We will send you an email uh, with a link, and probably by tomorrow. Um, and we um, it's wonderful to share this virtual space. 
and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars and office hours. And, uh, and we certainly look forward to receiving your applications by July 13th at 4 p.m. Um, I just wanna say thank you for your continued determination and your dedication um, to arts, to our field, to our communities. Um, we remain committed on this journey of revitalization and recovery together, and we're honored to continue this work with you. We know what, that when the arts thrive, New York soars, and so does the governor. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Take care. <laughs>